Welcome back to New to Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and today I have a special guest with me who just landed a job in medical device sales and was able to break in, and that guest is Seth Coletti. I'm so excited to have him. He was able to land his dream job in medical device sales after a great search, um, but a long search with that as well, because it's never, never short. And we're excited to have him today. So Seth, thanks for jumping on today. Yeah, absolutely, Jacob. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, and again, congratulations on landing a job, man. It, that's, that's honestly the toughest part through the process is getting that offer. You got it. And now the real fun starts as you're probably learning. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of training to start out with, so, but I'm excited. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So, hey, I want to jump into it again. Give uh, value to everyone who's listening today. You're you're fresh off it. You just got the job. You just are starting the job. You went through all the process. Can you kind of tell us what the process was like? The interview, how many you interviewed with, and then we can always backtrack what you were doing before. But since you're so fresh with it, I would love to just hear your experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So first thing I'll definitely say is it's not easy. And you, you know, people probably say that, but I, I didn't realize that until I started. I didn't realize, you know, exactly how hard it was to get into the industry. So, you know, it started out with me just putting in, you know, a few applications and not hearing anything back at all. Um, and I was like, man, what do I do? So I, I hopped on LinkedIn, luckily saw somebody that, you know, was posting, you know, tips how to get into med device. And I just went from there. Um, I really didn't hear anything back from a bunch of applications that I submitted. Uh, you know, a couple weeks later, I would get the email, you know, we've decided to move to other candidates, you know, uh, the generic email that they send you. But my main thing was, you know, I want to get into this industry. You know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get in. So, you know, I got a couple tips right off the bat. Hey, network, network, network. So that's what I did. Um, and once I started networking, I, I not only, you know, met new people, made connections, but I learned a little bit about the industry that way, you know, from each person that way, when I took these interviews, I knew, you know, some tips from here, some tips from there. And I wasn't just some guy off the street that doesn't know anything about the industry. So once I started getting the interviews, that was, you know, I had a couple interviews I did right at first where I did absolutely terrible at, I mean, all the listeners, they're going to have that too. It, it happens. We you're all do. Get in there. Exactly. <laughs> you, you don't know what they're going to say. You, you know, you kind of have an idea, but you don't know how you're going to answer the questions. Um, so the main tip I, I would give people, you know, about the interview process is just accept an interview if you get it. Uh, even if you're unsure about the job or the position, the company, um, they may say something in the interview that changed your mind. Um, but they'll also ask you some questions that, you know, what I learned in the interview process is a lot of the questions are very similar. Um, so you can kind of get your answers ready. Uh, that way it's not, you know, a, a shot in the dark, you know, when you're answering them. So um, each interview that I did, you know, for, for each company, they probably had, I would say the, the minimum number of interviews that I went through for a company was about three. Um, mm -hmm. And then some companies up to like six or seven. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, what I've noticed with, you know, they may have just started this with COVID from what I'm hearing from a lot of people, but a lot of them were panel interviews. So you'd have multiple people that were, you know, kind of coming at you. And at first that's, that's pretty intimidating, but um, I would say, you know, main tip there is just to kind of interact with, you know, each person on the panel, you know, don't just cater your answer to one person, you know, kind of talk with each of them um, and kind of get, you know, interacting with, with everyone. Cause that's why they bring that panel on there. They want, they want your opinion from, you know, multiple different people. So um, main thing, it's not easy. It, be patient, um, put in the work and, and you'll get somewhere. Dude, I, so I told you guys you were going to get a bunch of knowledge, Seth. You just jumped a bunch of knowledge. You dropped it right there um, because first, first off, I got to say networking, right? We all say it. We, I say it till I'm blue in the face on here, especially coming with no sales experience. Networking, it's not so much what you know, it's who you know. First off, it's that's how you're going to get your at least foot in the door um, to get these interviews. Second of all, I want to just touch on the fact of what you said of, you know, being able to make it individualized to each person you're talking to. When I would go in and I had panel interviews as well, I would go look up every single human being that I was going to talk to that was going to be on that panel. 
and find something I had in common. So right, right away can make that connection and start talking. You know, luckily I had uh, some people during interviews that like maybe used to own a gym or worked out at a gym, you know, and then you being a personal trainer, make that connection. So I want, I just love that you, you said that to the listeners and, and we're able to just get that across, you know? Um, and again, like you said, it's, it's not easy. Um, I always tell people, you know, I've done a lot of hard things. This was one of the hardest things I've done in my life of just being consistent, but also getting pushed, uh, knocked down. And I always tell people it's, you're going up, you're going up, you get punched in the face, you're back at the bottom and it's a restart every single time. Right. Yeah. There was some of those, you know, through the process where I got to, you know, the very last interview and, you know, they went with the other candidate. And, you know, a lot of the times too, it was, you know, I asked for feedback and it was the other guy had medical sales experience. Um, And that's something, you you know, if they already made the decision, there's really nothing you can do about it. But, you know, it goes back to the tips that, you know, you always give out, always close the interview, you know, make sure that when you leave that thing that, you know, they're going to give you the job. Um, So, you know, that's another thing that I would, you know, stress, close the interview. Yeah. And, and I just remembered, I also wanted to touch on, like you said, um, I always told people to, to do as many interviews because I sucked on my first three. Like you said, you don't know what you're about to get into and then they hit you with stuff. Um, but what I always told people is once you've done, you know, four or five, even three, it's like watching game film. If you're an athlete, right. You, You know, the play that's coming you've just had more time to prepare for that play. So that first question that you got asked and you just got hit in the face, that first interview, by the time you've seen it on the fourth interview, you have a pretty good answer and you can, you can close it then. Right. And I would even say, you know, be persistent. I'll tell a little, you know, small story, but yeah, I went through the interview process with one company. I was pretty sure I wanted to work there, but um, I got to the last interview and I, or second to last interview and I didn't get the final one. Um, and I was, you know, I was pretty beat up about that, but I found the regional manager on LinkedIn that I would have interviewed with. And I reached out to him anyway, and just asked him if he would have a phone call with me. He actually had a phone call with me and got me set up for a position that he knew was going to open up. So he said, Hey, you know, that one's, we went with the other guy, but I know about this position. You know, what, what do you think about that? So I didn't end up taking that one, but it just shows, you know, be persistent and it, it pays off. I love it. And I, and I do want to touch on real quick for everyone listening. The first thing you said, I'm determined to get into this industry and I don't care what it takes. And I was just having a call with someone today. And that's the biggest thing I have to tell everyone is you, you have to be committed to this because you're going to get said, get told, no, you're going to get, feel like you get the wind knocked out of you and they want to see if you're going to get back up. And, And I've talked to a lot of candidates who listen to this and I'm like, they, they'll be discouraged after two or three months and they're ready to quit. And I'm like, I'll just be honest, man. If you're ready to quit after two or three months of getting told, no, you probably shouldn't be in this industry because as you'll find out being in the industry, you get told no all the time. And, and everyone thinks medical device sales, people are happy to see you. That's not always the case. When you walk in, they're like, why are you here? And, and you might have some get called some choice words. So I always just say that to everybody. It's the determination. And, and I had the exact same mindset as you, Seth. Um, when I went into every interview um, and, I, and every person I talked to on the phone out of all 180 of them, I said, this is my job. Like, I'm going to make this a career. I don't care what it takes. And I also don't care if I get in tomorrow or if I get in in three years, I'm going to get in. And that, I right. think that's a mindset that everybody out there needs to, needs to listen to um, just because like you said, it's a tough, it's a tough road ahead of you. And if you can't get through this interview process, like I just tell everybody, the interview process is hard, but it's the easy part because then you get in and then the real work starts. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I agree. I love it. So I know we jumped right into the interview process before we move on. I do want to ask how many interviews do you think you probably went through? Cause I always tell people, you know, for my number, it was 10 to 15, you know, I don't know exact, but it's a lot. And the reason I'm stating this is everybody calls me and they think they're going to get their job after the first interview. And I'm like, if you're that one person who does awesome, I'm happy for you. Most likely that's not the case. Um, would just love to hear, you know, how many interviews you went through, you know, to, before you actually landed the job that you have now. Yeah. I, I went through a good bit of interviews, you know, for one, because I, you know, I wanted to take them for the experience of the interview, but for two, because I really wanted to decide, you know, I wanted to have a choice of where I could go. Mm. Um, so I, I did as many as I could. I, I probably did, you know, around 15, I would say, yeah. um, maybe even a little bit more, but like I said, that's just cause I was taking, you know, anything I could get that way. Hey, I, I get my leg up on the next interview. 
Uh, maybe they'll throw a curveball at me that I haven't heard yet. And, you know, maybe if it's a company that I wasn't as interested in, maybe they say something. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. You know, I would, I might change my mind. I love that, man. That's a great mindset to go into the interview process with. That's amazing. Um, now, I want to backtrack, right? We went all hell hard and heavy at the beginning. I want to backtrack. What were you doing before this? Um, and then what made you choose, hey, medical device is the, the path I want to go down. So we'd love to just hear your journey in that. Yeah, so I, uh, I just graduated college in December. Um, I majored in exercise science. Um, while I was in college, I, uh, I got a job in boat sales. You know, the reason behind that, I, uh, growing up, you know, I was a, come from a very low income family um, and I had to put myself through college. So I kind of found that when I was getting into college and, you know, that job was open. I didn't know anything about boats, but I knew that that would help support me through college. So I was just persistent like I was with the medical sales job, you know, and I ended up landing it. Um, and I had that job throughout college and I kind of coming into college, I had a passion for healthcare. Um, you know, when I was, before I went into high school, I had to have spinal fusion surgery. So kind of coming out of that, I had a lot of recovery that I had to do, had to go through physical therapy, you know, I was in the hospital. Um, so that kind of sparked a passion for healthcare. And then I jump into this boat sales job in, in, in college. Um, and I was like, man, I have a passion for sales too. So I talked with a few people and they're like, Hey, you know, there's medical sales, you know, you can go into an industry where you can combine both of them. Um, so that's really where I kind of got my sales experience and, you know, the passion for it. You know, I love the interaction with customers and it's not necessarily, you know, B2B, like everybody says you need to have, um, which, you know, coming through the process, I got told that a lot, Hey, go to B2B sales first, um, you know, go to ADP, you know, go to sell copiers, whatever it is, which is a completely fine industry, but just to be completely honest, I did not want to do that. I, yep. I wanted to get into medical sales. I'm like, Hey, you know, I don't, I don't want to sell payroll. I want to sell, you know, a medical device. So, um, I, I didn't let that kind of hinder my, my experience. You know, if anything, I, I, I told, you know, I'm moldable, you know, I, I don't have any, you know, bad habits. I didn't go through, you know, thorough sales training. I just kind of jumped into it. Um, and I've also got the exercise science background. So yes. you're not going to have to teach me a ton about anatomy and physiology. Yep, dude. Uh, perfect. So, so three things I want to touch on. Number one is everybody rewind it two minutes and listen to what Seth just said about being moldable, like ready to go. That If you don't have sales experience, there's your answer when they ask you why they should hire you with no sales experience. You know, talking about being moldable, being able to become, you don't have any bad habits. You can become the best rep that they want. That's so first off, awesome, uh, awesome answer. That's amazing. Uh, number two, where you really just went in and talked about uh, just getting in again. Sorry, I'm just thinking through my thoughts, but thinking about how you said you're going to get in, do whatever it takes. I love that. When you said you're not going to ADP, I got told that so many times, especially right. Personal training wasn't considered sales experience, even though I always fought and I was like, I think it's the hardest sale because I'm making people do the activity that they're paying for. Right. But with that said, though, I'm, I'm with you. I was like, I'm not going to take a sales job that's going to go sell copiers because it doesn't get me to the end goal that I want. I'm just going to work harder than any other person out there. And I'm just going to go get the job that I want right now. Um, so I, I love that. And then number three, just being able to uh, talk about your story of, you know, how you loved healthcare and you found something that you're passionate about. And then you found another passion and you were able to merge those passions and, and bring that into your story as you were trying to break in. I think that's a huge part of the interview process, but also breaking in. And I would love just to touch on that for a second, have you kind of go into depth with that of just knowing your story. You know, I, I know I had a whole podcast about knowing your story, but I want to talk, uh, talk to uh, you about your story and being able to how you related it to show you were the right candidate for the job you're interviewing for. So uh, if you guys are listening, this is something I think that everyone needs to really pay attention and, and use because you need to use your characteristics or things that have happened in your life to get a job. You need to show that you can do the job already and sh through your life experience. If you can tell that story of why you're the great fit, you get that job. So Seth, I would love to just kind of hear about, again, a little touch on your story and how you would bring that into the interview process. Yeah. I mean, the main thing is, you know, if you have a story know it and be willing to tell it, you know, cause in the interview process, they're, they're not going to remember, you know, just a, a generic bland answer. They're going to remember the story. Um, so that's kind of what I would do in the, in the interviews, you know, when they would ask me, you know, how, what got you here? You know, well, Hey, I had to put myself through college. 
Um, I had to pick up this sales job while I was in it. You know, I had a passion for healthcare, you know, and that shows that, you know, I didn't have the direct, you know, med device experience or B2B experience, but it shows that I had hard work. It shows that, you know, it, it took me a lot to get here. Um, and that, you know, I wasn't going to take, you know, a few no's and let that get me down. Um, so that's, you know, something I would definitely say, if you have a story, you know, be ready to tell it because, you know, everybody I told my story to, they were like, you know, that's, it, it's great to hear, you know, we, we love it. Um, and I really feel like I got a good, a lot of good feedback from it. Um, and even, you know, made some connections that, you know, I didn't take the job there, but, you know, I made really good connections with people and, um, learned a lot throughout the process. I mean, even just for you, as many people as you reached out to, um, use that. I mean, cause you're, you're cold calling people on LinkedIn, you know, you're, you're sending, you know, messages and having phone calls. So you may not have had B2B experience, but you're reaching out to, you know, I think you said over 2000 people. So yeah, it, it's, you know, you were basically selling then. Yep. No, hundred percent. And that's uh, one thing I always tell people about your story is people are going to remember how you made them feel. Um, and if you can make that connection like you did, um, I think that's a huge, huge part of this. And that's what I tell everybody who calls me. You have to have a story. If you're a former athlete, well, there's characteristics of discipline, hard work, teamwork that are going to go into the same thing that your job is for medical device and using that. If it's sales or if you're a waiter or whatever it is, you know, you need to be able to take characteristics that you use there and put it in. And I love that your story of, you know, especially when you said, hey, what's your story told? It told hard work. It told that determination. It told that you're not going to quit after anything because, again, like we talked off screen, like first generation uh, college student, man, like you're and, and while you're working a sales job to put yourself through, you know what I mean? Like it shows right. that you have the heart. It's going to you're going to be the right candidate and that getting that told no isn't going to make you go turn around and cry and feel bad for yourself. You're going to say, okay, on to the next one. Um, and yeah, man, being able to tell a story, show relentless. The thing I tell every single person that ever calls me or reaches out to reaches out to me is being able to do the job while you're trying to get the job. And all I mean by that is like you said, you didn't get the job uh, with that regional manager, right? You didn't get that interview with that regional manager. You personally reached out to that regional manager though, and still got a call with him. And what I always would tell people is why I always push the Excel sheet, right? Um, is when I had 180 names on that Excel sheet, was that impressive to some people? No, but to some people I could say, Hey, they would be like, you don't have sales experience. And I'm like, you're, you're right. But hey, here's all the people I talk to. Here's the person who influences you. And that's why I'm sitting in front of you today. Just like when I find a doctor, I don't know, but I find out who influences him and I'm in front of that doctor. And I just say that, especially if you don't have sales experience to those who are listening, if you do the job to get the interview, then every time they say you don't have that quote on B2B sales experience or that medical device sales experience, and you can point to how you are sitting in front of them by doing the exact job that you would be doing if you had the job, it's a real easy answer for that. Right. Absolutely. And I would say too, when you're reaching out, I mean, I mean, one thing that I did was, I mean, these guys get a lot of messages on LinkedIn. I'm so sure many. you get a lot of messages. You know, what I found out at first was, you know, I was just sending a generic message, you know, Hey, I'm Seth, you know, want to talk to you. I mean, I customize my message. So I put a few things in there. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the listeners, you know, I put, you know, a few of my sales achievements on there. Um, I just said, I'd love to learn from you as much as I can. Um, and I got a lot of responses back from that. You know, people, people would message me back or talk on the phone with me and they'd be like, you know, we don't re usually respond to messages. We get so many of them, but you know, we saw yours and it caught our eye. Um, so even if it's not, you know, sales experience, put something in there that'll catch their attention and they want to at least, you know, message you back and say, you know, Hey, you know, I can't really help you, but you know, here's an idea. Um, or, Hey, thanks for reaching out, but put something in there to, to stand out. I love that. And we need to touch on that and sit here for a second for everybody listening. I say this to every single person. I had a generic message because right when you send out 3000 messages, you're having a pretty generic message. You can't make it super custom. But what you can do is make one custom thing to each person. Like I said, I went to every single buddies or every person's profile and found one connection that I had with them, whether it was a school, a sport, a hobby, something that we had in common. And I would touch on that. And, um, and like you said, I would put how many people I reached out to. That was my deciding or like my difference. Hey, I've already talked to 112 people, you know, and that's something I put to stand out. But the thing that everyone who's listening needs to hear 
you ask to learn from them. You know, too many people, and I, and I say this because I get the message, but I learn this the hard way. So when I send this back to people, it's always out of love because I had to learn it. It's not because I'm trying to be arrogant. It's when you shoot a message and you're like, hey, I want a job. Can you help me? Like, and you just are like, or do you know of any? Nobody's going to help you because all you're doing is asking for them. You just want to take, 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 take. Instead, you need to ask like, and every single time I put in my message, I would love your expert experience. I would love to hear your expert experience because they are an expert. They're in it and you're, and you're trying to learn from them. And I say this to every single person I talk to on the phone. What do people like to do? They like to talk about themselves. And I say that as I'm talking about myself on the phone, I'm like, see, just like I'm talking to you about myself, of uh, my experience of breaking in, this is what everybody else who you're reaching out to. So what you did, and I want just everybody to hear is that's amazing of you need to ask to learn from them. Because you know what? A lot of people in this, this is our job. We're teaching. We're teaching people how to use our device. We love to teach. Um, but also, if you can get that buy-in of like, hey, I want your to expert experience. Now, like I always joke around with people after I get off on the off a call with someone, I'm feeling all good and happy because I'm like, oh, I just helped somebody, right? And really, did I? I don't know. But the way you customize your message, I got this told the same thing. You know, I was told, hey, I never respond. I'm responding to you. And it was because the exact same thing. We had a very similar message, touch about something that se separates ourselves from anybody else, but also asking to learn from the person we're reaching out to. Because again, we're asking to, to learn from them um, and not just trying to take the next job that they know of. Because just to sit on this for one more second, when you call me and you're like, hey, do you know, or you message me on LinkedIn when anybody does that? And they're like, hey, do you just have a job that I, can have or do you know of any jobs that I can just go to my I don't ever do this but what I want to say to everyone is why would I why would I put you up for it I don't know you I'm not going to put my name on the line because I don't know you and so that's that's another thing I just think you do a great job at is you got to make that personal connection someone's got to like you, you know you know like this is our first time meeting but it's like you're easy to talk to you're fun to like interact with that's easy for me to go tell one of my friends or if I have learned of a job opening it's easy for me to go tell someone that compared to if you just were like hey my name's Seth do you know of any job openings in your area thanks I really want to work for your company you know Right. Yeah. And I mean, when you're reaching out to people, you know, it doesn't have to be to get a job from that person. I, I learned, like I said, so much from from just talking to these guys. And, you know, I didn't reach out to as many people as you did just because I wasn't in the search for as long. But, you know, I probably had conversations with, you know, 60 or 70 yep. people. Um, and I just would I have a notebook. I wrote down as much as I could from, you know, each person. Um, and I really never even, you know, asked them, hey, do you have a position? You, yes. you know of a position, but I had a, you know, a, a good amount of people, you know, say, Hey, I know about this. I know about that. Have you talked to this person? Um, and that's just because, you know, you're not, you're not, you know, begging for a job. You're yep. making genuine connections with these guys. You know, I still talk to a lot of them, you know, you helped me a lot. I've talked to, you know, other people, you know, I still, you know, text. It's not, it wasn't all about the job for me. It was about, you know, making connections and, and building my network. Yes. I love that. And so again, going with just learning. If you go with that mindset again, I did the same thing. So I never asked about job openings um, to be real as well. Like I just learned, Hey, I had four questions of learning, you know, and, and I'll tell everybody, you know, like everybody I ever talked to my, I would just give like a quick little spiel. Like I've always said on this podcast, but then I would ask, how'd you break in, you know, like learn from them. And then, Hey, um, what are the pros? What are their cons? Uh, what advice would you give to someone like myself? That was it, you know? And then if they really exactly. like you, if they like you and they know of something, they're going to let you know. You know what I mean? So I think you hit the nail on the head right there of just going in there. And then second of all, you're growing your network. And I say that too, because there's friends that just by networking, I have friends now from that, that we still right. call. And even like this podcast is a perfect example. A majority of the people that are a guest on here are people I cold called or people I reached out to and that helped me and that are friends and that like, I still text on a monthly basis and, and we hang out, you know, like, and, and also not only to get the job, who do you think I'm texting when I'm in the job? And I'm like, I don't know what the heck this is. I text one <laughs> of my guys that have been in it for eight years and they're like, Oh yeah, it's this. And they helped me out. So like you said, if you go in with the right heart and you're, you're just looking to 
to learn and to network, it's going to take you so much farther than if you're that person who's just looking for a job and you come off like, I don't know you, but here's my resume. Let me know if you know of a job because I'll, and I'll let everybody know. Um, I hear this from many reps because I'm one of the few reps who actually will reply back to people. Um, cause I had so many people reply back to me. If you do that and you go with just asking for what you can get, it leaves a sour taste in pe- reps mouths. And it's the reason they don't reply back to people. Right. I agree. Yeah. So I just, I did want to touch, I know that was a little rant, but I always just want to tell people, you know, like this is always out of love. This is what I had to learn the hard way, but it's, it's awesome to, to see someone else who took a very similar approach, like you Seth. but look at that you had success and now you're with one of the top medical device companies. And, uh, it's just, it's just fun to see all of that. So being able to talk about, you know, how you broke in your experience. I also just want to see any ex- any more advice to someone what they can do to make themselves stick out to everybody else. And even with that, once you get into the interview process, you know, if you're in the top, if that final interview, there's probably a lot, they're, they're all good candidates. How do you be that one candidate? I would say, you know, the main thing that I did was just be genuine, you know, with everybody you talk to, don't try to be somebody that you're not, yep. you know, be yourself. And, you know, what I would do is, you know, build connections with who I'm talking to. So like you did, I would go on LinkedIn the night before, you know, do a little bit of research about them, but I would also do a lot of research about the product. That way, you know, I was ready in case they asked me any questions about it. Um, and even if they happen to not ask any, ask any questions about it, I would, you know, mention a few things about it. Um, so the main thing that, you know, I would go back to though, is just be genuine. And I, I think a lot of, you know, interviewers will see that, you know, they have people that come in there and they, they're going to know if you're not, if you're, you know, if you're fake, kind of tell them, yeah, if you're fake, exactly. Um, so just be yourself, you know, have fun throughout the process because, you know, it is, it could be a long process. It could be a short one. You may get lucky, um, but just enjoy it. Learn as much as you can. If you have a bad interview, you know, don't let it knock you down. You know, you'll get other interviews. It's going yep. it, to, it's going to be okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, it, it just wasn't meant to be. So take all the interviews that you can be genuine, um, and be persistent, man. That's, that's amazing advice. And I love that. Thank you, Seth, for just sharing that, you know, like, and what you said, genuine, it's, it's the truth. Show your heart. Like I always joked around with people, like I wear my heart on my sleeve. You can tell how I'm feeling. I'm just that kind of person. Um, but like you said, I've been told this, you know, when you go into an interview, people can tell when you're faking it. And guess what? If they find out you're faking it, they're going to attack you on it because they're going to be able to sniff it. They're going to, if you catch yourself in a little lie of faking it, they're going to find it and they're going to stay on that the whole hour that you're on that phone call. Um, so like you said, being genuine, being who you are and staying true, but also touching on it, do your research. Um, like you said, I did the exact same thing. I actually would make a go above and like make that book where I researched doctors and all this, but also put on products. And like you said, it goes a long way when you're able to talk about it if if they bring it up and you know about it but also if they don't know about it and you bring it up they're like wow seth really did his research like he's not messing around now exactly yeah do your research i mean it it doesn't you know you can even do you know surface level you know spend you know 30 45 minutes you don't have to do a ton of research but be ready just in case they ask you something in case they're like hey what do you know about the product you don't want to just be there uh uh you, you want to know at least a few things. And I mean, it, you don't have to know, you know, the ins and outs of it. They're going to teach you that, but they want to see that you can go and you can find that information in case you need it. Yep. And I, and I just to touch on that one last piece is you want to always know something, right? Because I always say this to people. I learned this being a personal trainer when people would come in, I worked for a guy who was actually like, he was uh, Instagram famous, uh, but people would come in and they'd be like, what do you do? And his comment was like, how can you walk into someone's business and not know what they do? Like you didn't take 30 seconds to Google them. And I say that because it's the same thing. You do a product. If you don't know what your product you're hiring, getting hired for, like how, how well did you really prepare for it? Same with when you go to a doctor, you better search that doctor and like at least have a talking point, like where they went to school or find out where their hobbies are. If you don't have that, you're walking in blind and you're missing huge crucial parts of like going to introduce yourself to a doctor. So again, Man, this this episode might be one of my favorites just because of all the the knowledge you dropped and great 
useful tips that people can take from this podcast and start using immediately to get interviews and to start getting their foot in the door for that job. So if you guys are listening, please go back and listen to this again and again and again while you're going through the interview process because Seth has shown that he knows how to get those interviews and how to get that job offer. So man, Seth, thank you again for taking time out of your day to just jump on our podcast. But again, congratulations. I know you put in a lot of hard work and it's, it's fun to watch your journey and, and see you finally land that job that you've been trying so hard for. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you for having me on, Jacob. And I appreciate you doing the podcast for you know, all the listeners. It, it really helped me personally out a lot. You know, I listened to all the episodes. I was, you know, taking as many tips from it as I could. Um, you know, if anybody has any questions for me, I'm not a guru, you know, by all means, but I will tell you what worked for me and see if I can help you in any way. So feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, you know, I'll get back with you. I love that, man. Again, Seth, thank you so much for hopping on and everybody for who's listening. Again, pre please press that like and subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, if you guys are wa or listening on the podcast, if you guys do a five-star review. Again, it just helps us grow the podcast to have more impact on others' lives. And again, that's just my mission is I had so many great people help me break into this medical device world. And, I, and that's my goal is just to help as many people um, chase their dreams and chase their dream job to live the life they would like. So Again, I appreciate Seth jumping on. I appreciate all you listeners who take time to, to listen to me ramble on, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.